Around the globe, data is everywhere, growing exponentially. Data powers entire businesses. Fueling industries with insights, knowledge, and opportunities. We've been on a mission to help organizations mobilize their data with the Snowflake Data Cloud. Now you can break down silos of data, uniting teams across your business. You can share data with suppliers and partners to drive decisions and tap third-party data instantly to gain new insights and a competitive edge. When you have the full story, you can serve your customers in entirely new ways. The data cloud is redefining your industry, helping realize your company's vision, empowering you to build the future by bringing data together now. Hello, my name's David Parfit. I run the data products team for William Hills International and UK Group. It's a real pleasure to talk to you today about Snowflake at William Hill and especially how Snowflake has helped us transform data and analytics. Moving on to the agenda, first of all, we'll do an introduction to William Hill. I'm sure a few of you already know us quite well. Secondly, We'll look at how we use data and analytics in William Hill and in the gaming industry. And thirdly, we'll talk about why Snowflake has made such a difference to our business. As an introduction to William Hill, I'd like to run this video. I think many of you will recognize the music. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Yeah, but King Frank was runner up on Good and Heavy. That's the one. But then I know. That's how you pay my coins. I'm coming! I'm coming! Hold the door! Come on, then, let's go right. Come on, then, let's go right. I'll be alright. hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, we, we were actually founded in 1934, so go back a long way. Um, we're also really proud of our retail network. So our shops were, were first opened in, in 1966, and we have over 1,400 shops in, in the UK at the moment. Uh, we have 12,500 employees, eight different brands. William Hill is one of those brands. Uh, offices in nine countries as well. So now, a, a significant player in the uh, sports book and the gaming industry. I'd like to just take you through uh, an overview of our environment. And I think uh, a, a lot of this will be familiar to people in the audience. We have quite a diverse range of systems. Um, in our case, it's often through mergers and, and acquisitions. And, and of course, from a data and analytics point of view, it's really important to do things like understand our customer, but if you're doing that from multiple operational systems and multiple different product systems, so what you need to be able to do is combine and conform that data. I think really importantly, one of the things that we've always had in mind with Snowflake over the last two to three years has been not just the traditional business intelligence and advanced analytics, whilst of course they do provide tremendous value, but also digital. We're, we're very much a digital first organization and Snowflake is very much part of that journey for us. We operate in um, 13 countries. 
And that means that we have to understand our customers across all of those 13 markets and across all of our brands. Sportsbook is, is probably what you know as uh, horse racing or, or football betting. So, you know, betting on a team to win or, or betting on uh, someone scoring a next goal. Gaming is what you usually recognize as casino games, but also other online games. And of course, as I said, we have a retail network, so have retail systems as well, so you can go into our shop, place bets and, and play games. Moving on to our technology strategy. This is something that we, we published as part of our last annual report, so it's, it's publicly available information. And what I'd really like to bring your attention to is, is how data is really part of the fabric of our business strategy and our technology strategy. Our smart data platform is our AWS based platform on which we run Snowflake. So smart data platform has been running for a, a couple of years now. Um, and again, it's primarily a digital first platform. This is all about us helping our customers have the best possible experience with us. And obviously from our point of view, understanding that experience and personalizing it and, and tuning that experience so they can have the best possible experience of, of um, either using our sportsbook betting or our gaming. We've done things like redesign our homepage. So again, obviously, if you're a customer of ours, you know, increasingly people have moved to digital, particularly over, over the COVID times. And that uh, experience has to be driven by data. What we don't want to happen is that it's just the same for everybody. What we do want to happen is that each of our customers really sees something that's personalized to them, that understands what they've done before, understands what they might like to, to use in the future. We have um, several items on our roadmap, and I just wanted to, to highlight a, a couple. Again, AWS Cloud, you know, we're heavily invested in AWS. We do also use GCP. We've been doing things like redesigning our, our betting engine, um, redesigning our, our trading platforms. We are, again, very much focused on making sure that we, we give the best possible experience to our customers, and therefore the gaming in integration and front end has been a, a, another focus area for us. So I just wanted to focus more on the tech objectives. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people in the audience uh, want me to drill down into, into more the technology side. Just wanted to highlight, um, I, I guess, a couple of our unique challenges and, and opportunities. One is compliance. You know, we work in, in a, a heavily regulated industry, of, of, of course. And of course, that then means from a data and analytics point of view that we really do need to understand our customer and, and how they're using our, our digital services and how they're using our, our retail services as well. So understanding our customer, knowing how they're using our products is, is very important and, and actually an obligation through our compliance obligations with each of the local regulators. We also use data science at scale, and, and actually some of that is used um, within the compliance area. So we use a, a data science model, or a series of data science models, to understand if um, a, a customer is showing signs that potentially they're gaming for too long or, or spending too much money. Um, and, and then obviously highlighting that uh, and taking the appropriate actions. I think it's also really important to mention the people side. So you know, along with the technology, we've been working on ensuring that we have an internal data engineering team that's world class, uh, an engineering team that can increasingly help us to really push the envelope in terms of the technology as well, which of course, we all really enjoy doing. And you know, Snowflake have been an excellent partner in terms of making sure that we do that, as have AWS. I think also it's really important that um, you know, we build a capability that has not just today's work and today's project, but a real vision for what we want to do in the future. And again, you know, we, we have a full roadmap that continues to ensure that we build out these capabilities. One of those areas is, you know, we will continue to open up new markets, we'll continue to open up new brands. And to be able to do that, 
easily and quickly is, is really key to our agility in the marketplace. So we have been working on a standardized set of features that's actually part of our next generation of operational platforms. I think I'd observe that maybe in the past, data and analytics has been seen as almost an add-on or an afterthought. But actually at William Hill, what we're doing is embedding data and analytics into, as I said at the beginning, not just kind of reporting after the fact, not just on analytics, but actually part of our operational processes too. I want to show you a couple of examples to really bring this to life. And quite a recent example, actually the, the Acker Club is just being rolled out at the moment, has been how we've uh, used Snowflake in the background to provide real-time balances to our, to our customers. So Acker Club is an important um, product launch for us. It's, it's something that we've only just brought into, into the marketplace. And again, looking at it from the customer experience point of view, we wanted to make sure that the information we provide to a customer is as up to date as possible. And as I said, uh, our back end is actually in many ways quite complex, um, multiple data sources, uh, multiple platforms, um, particularly actually on the bonus side. And what we've been able to do is use Snowflake to help us actually bring that data together and be able to present it back to a, a customer on our digital sites um, within, within seconds in, in real time. So in this case, um, we looked at a batch-based approach, but, but obviously in these days, it's, it's not a great experience for a customer if, if the data that they're seeing on a digital site is maybe up to a day old. Now it potentially also means that um, we get lots of queries from customers about why yeah, you know, certain transactions weren't being shown. So it's not a great experience, but of course using Snowflake and our technology stack, what we're able to do now is present that data back in real time. And um, we, we also therefore are able to present uh, how people are, are, are using the bonuses um, to our business users in real time as well. So we also move the, the reporting to a, a far more regular update. And that's particularly important at product launch and as, as the product settles down and, and matures. Just looking at the bottom of the slide, um, we, as, as you can see, we also use Databricks. Um, our data scientists in, in particular use Databricks and have done for, for the last couple of years. Um, we also use Tedium heavily and, and Kafka. So again, I'm sure you will recognize that stack from, uh, from many similar organizations. So another example I wanted to bring to you is how we're using data science to really understand our, our customer's experience. Um, in our industry, uh, if somebody um, has a poor initial experience, then the chances are that uh, we won't see them again. Uh, it, it's something that we're very aware of. But of course that can happen. Um, and if it does happen, then typically what we're trying to do is retain that customer through offering incentives. Our data science team are able to work with our marketing team to make sure that we identify customers that we might want to take some actions with. So for instance, if we believe somebody has not had an optimal experience in the early stage of their interaction with us and in, in, in the early stage of their use of our products, then we may, for instance, offer them incentives to, to come back. Again, I think this is, this is a really good use of Snowflake. We're able to retain billions of transactional records. We're able to understand patterns of that data you know, using uh, Databricks and, and, and other tools. And, and that's really enabled us to focus on this customer experience and, and focus on personalization. And actually, whether that's early life or, or as somebody continues to use, use us, you know, that interaction between what the customer is doing on our digital sites and our retail environment, um, our view of the experience they're having and, and how we make sure that they continue to, to use our products is, is really key and um, has proved to be tremendously successful. So I wanted to close with some, some learnings. So first of all, we, we're always use case led. Um, and I think this is really easy to say, but in the past with other technology stacks has been very difficult to, to execute. So it relies on us understanding the business value of a, of a project or an activity. It relies on us understanding the, 
the acceptance criteria. So what I mean by that is the ability of the business to say, you know, if you can do these three things for us, then, then that moves us forward. But of course, in, in the data and analytics world, that's often been difficult to, to execute. You know, our ability to deliver quickly has often been compromised by the technologies we've been using. But, but that barrier has, has, has gone. Um, we are now able to deliver multiple use cases quickly that offer incremental value to our customers and, and to our business. And I think that's a, that's a real plus point of our, of our technology and, and obviously of our people. And picking up on the people point, I think you have to think and act differently. I think the, uh, the, the world we're in these days means that um, there's tremendous value in really challenging yourselves about how you can actually ensure that you make best use of the technology. And again, you do that so that you drive business value and, and you drive a great experience for your customers. So for instance, if I go back to the ACA Club, again, initially we were looking at batch-based design, but that had some compromises in terms of our, 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 our customers and what they would have been able to see. And what we were able to do is actually really challenge that thinking and, and use Snowflake and our other technology stack to make sure that we delivered a real-time experience. Actually, that was also quicker and easier than the batch-based approach. So it's not necessarily you know, a, a more modern digital-based approach. It can take you longer or you know, mean that you uh, have to go and recruit a, a, a bunch of specialists. Actually, in our experience, it actually makes life a lot easier. So finally, what we're able to do now is get data into people's hands quickly. And, and this is a real enabler for our business because it means that if we can, within a few hours, give people access to a new data feed or give people access to some new attributes so that they're then able to understand that data and understand how it will be used in the future, not only do we get the benefit of that insight quickly, but also what we're able to do is productionize that data only when we understand how it will be used, which saves us time and saves us money and really focuses those kind of precious expert resources on, on work that we know will be valuable. So again, all of these three points are, are enabled by the technology, they're enabled by our teams and, and, and people. And I think in summary, it's about making sure you don't just use the technology, but you really do challenge yourself to use the technology differently. Thank you for your time. I really hope you've enjoyed the presentation and I look forward to your questions in the Q&A. I forgot to, thank you very much, Dave. So he's joining us now. We've got a couple of questions for you. Um, Ah, oh, there's a picture of someone else. I will stand there in front of that person. Hello, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> so hi, David. Um, first question we've got for you is, what is the busiest sports week that you deal with in terms of your data, I'm guessing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's interesting for us because the, the major events uh, are, are no surprise really important to our, our business. So. Um, if you're in horse racing, it, it tends to be Chelsea. Um, that's that's a huge week for us. So any of the famous major events, but Chelsea in particular features heavily on our on our calendar. Um, for football, um, obviously, Premier League um, drives a lot of um, a lot of interest. Um, but so do the big tournaments. So the Euros were huge for us too. Um, and, and if you're if you're in, in our business, there's there's already a lot of conversation about Qatar uh, next year, uh, the products we'll be launching for Qatar, the work that we need to do to prepare for for Qatar. So um, I guess that indicates how um, you know there's a lot of focus on um, on on horse racing and, and football, and those major events tend to be the ones we pull towards. But there again, the the AJ fight at the weekend, we're, we're sponsoring that, so that that's also huge for us and and great fun. It's, it's one of the one of the wonderful things about working for William Hill is that you know you're getting involved with these events and it's um, it's, it's fabulous. 
with so many competitors in the betting industry, have you found that personalizing the customer experience has improved the customer retention rates, retention rates rather in, in any way, in every way, I guess? Yeah, I think, I think for us, the, the trick is to make sure that a, a customer who's a William Hill customer um, continues to um, experience, um, for instance, if, they're, if they're, uh, their preference is horse racing, that we give them a good horse racing experience. But then the, the, the cross-sell opportunities for us into, let's say, either football, so you know, maybe encouraging them to, to start, uh, start betting on, on football, or, or gaming. Um, so one of the things that we found and, and the industry found over, over the lockdown is that there was a lot of movement of customers to experience online gaming and clearly people were at home. Was, um, there weren't many events for a period of time as well so we saw uh, a, a big uplift there. Um, and, and of course what we try and do is just offer people that wider experience. You know, Personalisation is often about ensuring that they, they get the best out of what they prefer to do clearly you know if, you, if you're a horse racer then you don't necessarily really have much interest in football so we might try to cross sell you but at the end of the day you might not have not have any any um, interest so a, a lot of what we do is just to ensure that, that that we understand people's preferences and that we continue to focus that they continue to, to play with us we um, we also have a large retail network which plays the, the huge part in this as well. And indeed, a lot of the data we deal with is is, is also retail data, and obviously those, those shops were closed for a while recently, um, but again, you know, have have opened up, and um, you know, that's really good because obviously that's kind of the personal touch with with customers, the face to face, you know, the, the traditional betting shop. Brilliant. One more question. Obviously, you've talked about Snowflake's role so far. What about the future? What are you going to be doing next? with Snowflake? Yeah, there, there's, there's a lot on our roadmap that's um, dependent on uh, Snowflake and our continued relationship with, with Snowflake. I think, in short, um, we are increasingly, as, as, a, as I said in the main talk, um, enabling real-time capabilities. Um, and, and Snowflake's absolutely key to that in, in the sense that to, to personalize those capabilities, you have to have an understanding of the customer, you have to have an understanding of not just what, what they're doing now, um, but also you know, how they've used this in the past, their preferences, etc. So, so that's what Snowflake provides us, it's this kind of mix of the operational, transactional world and what, what people are actually doing actively, for instance, within, within games, and also our understanding of the customer, the customer's preferences, um, and, and obviously from a William Hill point of view, how we see that customer relationship continuing to, to develop. Well, thank you very much, David. Really appreciate that and, and good to join us there at the end as well. So that's it for here now in the Cloud Theatre, everybody. But please join us again at midday where we'll be getting a presentation from Single Store, the Cloud Native Unified Database built for speed, scale, and agility. So come and find out about them.